Um, because didn't know what to expect. Um, by the way, the Raiders have a really nice facility. Uh, it was nice though when we walked inside, we um covered up some of the Raiders logos with some Chiefs logos and it kind of made it a little bit more homey. Um, but you know, it's nice in the sense that this is our second year in a row doing it for the guys who were here last year, so you kind of know what to expect a little bit. So, you, you kind of expect that bus ride over to a new practice facility. Um, you expect what we're doing right here today before we go in and do meetings and do practice. So that um, experience and familiarity becomes easier the second time around that you do it. And um, I think that that's been an advantage for us. What were your thoughts about the facility and stuff? I know there was a that backdrop about there. Yeah, man, it was, it was awesome. I mean, they have a, a 60 foot pool. Um, the, the weight room is massive. The indoor is massive. Every, everything inside of it is just big. So. Um, they definitely spent some money putting that together, uh, and I'm sure that uh, the Raiders players enjoy it. Justin, I met you uh, for Sky Sports on a rainy day in St. Joe's in July. Oh, yeah. What's it feels like a lifetime ago. Doesn't so, it? So how do you feel going into the Super Bowl after such a long season? Does it, does it kind of refresh you to get to this game? Because it must be a grind leading up to that. It makes, it, it makes the journey just so awesome man like you really get to look back and reminisce on experience of the adversity that we had to overcome to get to this point and you build strength off of that you know so you're able to take those experiences um and build a team the chemistry is higher guys get the letter and you can believe in yourself because you know when things go wrong and they, they some things that went wrong for us throughout the year um but our strength is that we've stuck together we've never thrown anyone under the bus and we consistently gave guys opportunities to try and make the next play and in the biggest moments, guys have showed up. So we take those experiences with us, and um, we want to end it. We want to end this game the right way with the Cinderella ending in and those, uh, in another moments, championship. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. In those moments, it must be very difficult to fight out of that adversity. Does experience help? That you, you, we know we're the Chiefs. We know how we. Well, absolutely, absolutely, because, you know, in this game, there's so much talent that's on the field. The game moves so quickly. There's going to be things that go your way, and there's going to be things that don't go your way. And the experience that helps us is being able to handle both ends. Coach Pagnola talks about this all the time. Um, manage the extremes. If we're up 14 points, managing that, that you don't relax and you keep the pressure on and you keep driving um, the point home and you don't let up, you know, because you see guys relax and then all of a sudden teams come back. And the same thing if you're down 14 points, you don't crumble underneath that pressure. You don't start pointing fingers. You don't try and play hero ball. You stay within the system. You believe in each other and you go out and play and you get the ball back in 15's hands and we can get right back in this game. Justin, He's definitely the most versatile wide receiver just because of all of the things that he does. Um, I would also give him the title of the toughest wide receiver because of the way that he runs. He's built low, he's built thick, he runs hard. Um, you see all over the film, guys just bouncing off of him with tackles. And he's unique in his ability to be able to run out of the backfield, run jet sweeps, and run downfield routes. So he kind of is able to have the whole tree. Um, so I think that he's definitely a, a weapon for them. And uh, Coach Shanahan uses him the right way. Well, the main thing, um, Debo's most explosive plays come from him able to force missed tackles. I mean, guys just bounce off of him. So uh, the critical thing for us to do is that when they do get the ball in his hands, because they're going to find ways to get him the ball, as they should, um, is that that first guy, if he can get him on the ground, strong wrap tackle, don't just throw your body in there because he bounces off of all of those. Be prepared to knock down the stiff arm. Um, those little things will make all the difference. Mm -hmm. human. What's something about you would want uh, kind of people are going to be watching the game maybe for the first time to know about? Yeah, um, you know what? I, I pride myself on being an authentic person, man. I find passion in um, helping others achieve their dreams and helping them reach their maximum potential. And me helping others actually motivates me to continue pushing myself to my limits. So um, I, I value authenticity. Um, I value finding ways to consistently get better. I don't believe that there's any one thing that you can be good at or any one thing that you can be bad at. I think that you can consistently get better at everything as long as you put the time and energy into it. So uh, that's the way that I live my life. I always find ways to get better at any and everything. Shout out Real Talk. Justin, I've been hitting up your Cutting for the Culture event tomorrow. Just, can you tell us a little bit about
about that event and why that's so important to you? Yeah, um, I love I love our coding for that. So my team is is so awesome with the J Reed and D Foundation. So uh, we had the bright idea when I was a Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee um, three years ago that we want to do a Super Bowl event that I'd be able to bring some coding and tech. Um, exposure for some kids to learn some new skills and also exposure for my foundation. Um, so we do this uh, coding challenge and we make it fun when we do um, beats that kids are able to use code um, to put beats together and make a cool uh, beat or sound or mix. And, um, you know, they have fun with it, but they're also uh, su subliminally learning coding skills and trying something new. So it's built for success. It's going to be at um, Democracy Preparatory Academy. And uh, we're going to do a, a clinic out there, have some guest speakers come, and the kids will be able to do some cool coding skills and hopefully make it fun for them, make it a positive experience, so that way, you know, if they have another opportunity to do something in the computer science world, uh, that they'll have the, the courage to go out and, and try it. One follow question. Uh, you guys are the underdogs again. I know it doesn't take much to motivate you guys, so does that add some extra motivation? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I love that role. I love being an underdog. I love having backs against the wall. I love everyone doubting you because that just fires all of us up, you know what I mean? We already don't need a lot of reasons to go out and uh, play extra physical, but uh, when you hear the, the things, and we ignore it, but some of it seeps in. When you hear the things said and um, the doubt, um, man, it just makes us tighter as a team and makes us ready to go play. We're almost done, you know, the last day of media availability with you guys. How ready are you to kind of get this over with to then move on to... You know, I mean, the game, plan, the game plan is in. We can play tonight. Like we can play, we can line it up tonight, and we're ready to play. You know, so um, the biggest thing will just be ma managing that emotion and that energy and that excitement and uh, making sure we let it out at the right time come Sunday.